My name is Barbara West, and it is my distinct privilege to serve as your MC this morning as we open the inaugural Florida Conference for Women. So I'm going to talk to you about my favorite subject, um, a subject I've become obsessed with in the last few years, and that is change. Uh, change was the word of the year last year. Um, I think it's probably going to be the word of the decade. And I think getting good at change is probably the number one life skill that we need to get good at, whether it's change in our careers, change in our finances, change in relationships. Uh, for any parents in the room, uh, teach your kids about change. It's a parenting skill. I know a lot of parents tend to protect their kids from change. I'm all for teach them change early and it makes it a lot easier as adults. So every single one of us in this room is in one of three categories. You're either struggling with a life change, maybe it's a job loss, uh, a breakup or a divorce, maybe it's financial worries. You're either in a different category, which is you secretly want to make a change. Maybe you want to change careers. Maybe you want to move. Maybe you want to find the love of your life, that soulmate. Uh, and then there's another category of people that are helping other people through a change. Maybe it's a health diagnosis of a parent or a loved one, or maybe a friend that's planning a wedding. And then there's a whole other category that someone reminded me of, which is there's some people there who are like, I'm just waiting for someone else to change. <laughs> so quick show of hands, who's in the first one? Who is struggling with a life change? Okay. Who is secretly wanting to make a change? Okay, it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> and who's helping someone else through a change? I think if you're a friend to someone, you're probably helping them through some sort of a change. So here's what I believe. I believe everyone can change. I believe that there are only so many excuses that we hang on to when we're going through change. So I'm gonna see some heads start nodding, I think, once I go through them. I'm too old, I'm too young, someone's gonna be upset, it's not my nature, it's gonna be painful, it's gonna take time, it's gonna cost money, Someone's going to disapprove. It's too late. That's another one I hear a lot. Or I just don't know where to start. So today at this wonderful conference is the place that you get to really let go of some of those excuses. First of all, identify the one that has been holding you back the most. But really sort of going, you know what? The I'm too old, that's my excuse consistently. So just allow this day to be the place where you identify that excuse you bring it out of your blind spot where you can see it loud and clear and if you can't see it ask someone else they could probably tell you immediately what's holding you back but at this place is where you get to get the life you want and not the excuses that you want so for me a few years ago at the humble age of 31 there were quite a few things i needed to change actually and there was quite a few excuses that i personally needed to let go so I was gonna share a little bit more of a personal story today and just show you sort of how I navigated through a lot of those changes. Um, what I feel we really as women need to sort of do, think, feel, believe to really get those changes that we keep on coming up against um, but that we secretly really want and deserve. So I wanted to get out of the corporate world. I wanted to break off a relationship that I knew was totally wrong for me I wanted to start a business that I thought at some point I would do in my life, I didn't know when. And the key factor there is I wanted whatever my work to make a difference in people's lives. I had these big jobs but I felt completely unfulfilled and there was no real meaning attached to it. On top of that I wanted to write a book. I wanted to lose some weight, I had about 25-30 pounds on me, more than I had now. And I really, bottom line, just wanted to listen to that inner microphone and that inner voice that if you woke up this morning, it probably woke up with you. So the inner microphone sounds like this. Ariane, you're in the wrong job. <laughs> Got it? Or Ariane, the guy you're sleeping with, wrong guy. Okay, <laughs> that's the microphone. We all have it. And for most of us, what we do is we, the way that we get through our day and our life is we have to turn that microphone off. Because to listen to that, 
involves such dramatic change sometimes, and it involves work, and it involves consequences. But that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to finally wake up in the morning and have, stop doing that reflex of, I've got to turn this microphone off. So the job I had was pretty big, the last one. I was managing director of a $500 million fund for Time Warner at the age of 28. Don't ask me how I got there. But you know, the real thing with that job was I was at the top of a very high ladder, and it was the wrong ladder, and it was leaning up against the wrong wall. So I don't know if you have ever had that feeling or you have that feeling now, but it was certainly the job that everyone expected me to be very happy with, but it was the wrong ladder. I certainly didn't feel any sense of contribution in what I was doing. I wasn't pursuing a passion, and I certainly wasn't being creative in any way. No one had ever told me that I was an entrepreneur. No one had ever told me that I was creative. I had been tattooed that I was the business person. I had the Stanford MBA, I had all those external things, and I was told that I was this certain thing. And I started living a life according to what other people had told me that I was. Let's get to the relationship now. So externally, the relationship I had was also perfect. This guy was one of People Magazine's top 20 bachelors. He looked great on paper, he looked great in person, but I knew pretty much from the first date, because that's when your intuition is the strongest, that this person was not the person that had a soul connection with me or a spiritual connection, or my intuition was very clear that it was the wrong person, and yet I still spent a couple of years of my life with this man. Didn't trust my instincts. At the time, I think my truth was that I live in New York City and I just didn't want to be single again in New York. So sometimes we make decisions against our inner truth because we'd rather not have another situation which is also painful. As for starting the business, so I had this idea to help people through life changes. Everyone I was meeting was going through a change. I had grown up in six countries, gone to seven schools, gone through a lot of change myself, personally, professionally. And, you know, I'd always sort of thought, well, why isn't there a company that helps people through change? Why isn't there a place where their only mission is to just make change easier for people? But again, I hadn't seen myself as ever starting a business, so I kind of put that aside. Then there was the weight issue. There was a lot of changes, and I think a lot of us have sort of more than one change. So I'm just going to share them all with you. I had the weight issue. I've been very heavy during my teens, felt pretty unattractive and I just sort of struggled to stay on track. And what I realized was that my weight was a lot more emotional weight than physical weight. Um, I'd been a vegetarian since I was 12, I was an athlete, but I was eating emotions. So I had five pounds of guilt, I had 10 pounds of unforgiveness, I had you know, five pounds probably of anger in there. But those were the emotions, and as I moved through those emotions, which were a lot directed towards myself, that's when the weight actually sort of very easily started falling off me. So I think Gloria Steinem put it best. This is probably my, one of my favorite quotes. To start making a change in your life, you have to get honest with yourself. And she has this lovely quote that says, the truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. <laughs> it, this one really pissed me off, believe me. So how did I pull off all these changes? <clears throat> well, first I got honest with myself. There was no use pretending anymore that everything was great and that I could tell everyone that I had this perfect guy and this perfect job because it wasn't the case. So I had to ask myself, Ariane, what are you not being honest about? And you know the truth. I know every single one of you out there knows the truth about what you're not being honest about as well. We say that we don't or we say that you know, we're not quite sure what we want, but inside you certainly do.